Everyone remembers the comedy Fantomas. Back in 1964, that car in the film seemed like fantasy. But few know that in the 60s, in the Soviet Union, flying cars like the Gaz-16 were already created. This is how it looked, and it flew brilliantly, by the way. The plan was for this car to operate as a taxi and ease the traffic on the roads. Did you know about this? Or consider another development resembling a flying saucer, the Shukin team's invention. It could potentially replace planes, being much more cost-effective. In case of engine failure, it didn't nosedive like a Boeing, but glided down to the nearest flat surface or even a body of water. America, in its quest to control Russia, spins the myth of Russia's backwardness, portraying the Russian people as incompetent, only capable of serving foreign masters. To reinforce this, they highlight the fact that Russia's science and technology consistently lag behind the West, predominantly relying on imported tech and equipment. What's interesting is that some of the most complex and advanced systems in aviation, rocketry, space, and maritime technologies belong and remain the most powerful in Russia. Yet, why do Russia's official media outlets avoid discussing new developments and technologies by Russian scientists? Instead, there's an influx of banal TV series and tales of untalented stars. In this video, I'll take on the role of the world's media outlets and introduce you to 10 Soviet inventors and their unique creations. Implementing these could have changed the world. Why Russians do not produce their own equipment now and who prevents them from doing so? Russia actually uses equipment and developments of manufacturers from other countries, China, USA, Korea, Japan, but very little use their own developments. Moreover, Russian brands that have managed to find their place in the market write their names in Latin. It comes to curiosities, the powerful Russian off-road vehicle UAZ traditionally holding and leading positions in off-road ability all over the world, having created a modern version under the name Patriot puts this name on the hood in Latin alphabet. And after all, this is also a continuation of the myth, everything good, of course, American. That's how propaganda works. In fact, for some mysterious reason, a lot of Russian developments in science and technology disappeared in an unknown direction, instead of becoming part of the life of Russians. And if they came to them, then only after passing through the West and called Western. Judge for yourself. Today, few of our contemporaries can imagine that the microwave oven in the USSR was developed in the years before the Great Patriotic War. In the newspaper Trud on June 13, 1941, there was a note about a unique way to cook a meat dish in just 20 minutes, although the consumer version of the microwave oven was presented only in 1984. Cell phones, including miniature cell phones that fit in the palm of your hand, were created in 1957-1961. In the 1970s, test copies of electric cars, including solar-powered ones, drove on the streets, and in 1976, Soviet streets were filled with cars that were fueled by water, the engine running on hydrogen, which was extracted from this water. Write in the comments how the world would have changed if this development had been given the opportunity to enter the automobile market. In 1985, the USSR had already produced a video camera for amateurs, Electronics 821. In 1986, a wristwatch with a radio receiver, and this is already microelectronics with a built-in microscopic magnetic antenna. In the same 1986 in Moscow was held the first successful launch of the Russian train car on a magnetic cushion, capable of moving at a speed of 250 kilometers per hour, almost silently. In 1988, the Council of Ministers of the USSR for Science and Technology awarded the developers of the Russian operating system demos, and in 1992, you can sit at the keyboard of the Russian laptop, Electronics MS-1504, well, and more large-scale development. Orbital aircraft systems Buran and Spiral to date do not know no equal, although they flew in the early 80s and the project was ready in the mid-60s. Do you know that the Americans stole this idea, changing only the name of their Challenger? And the Americans called the Looney the aircraft carrier killer, and it happened in 1980. And where did it all disappear to? Where are all the developments? Let's start with the most famous Russian inventor. His last name is Kulibin. It is widely known that he entertained the courtiers with music boxes, mechanical dolls, and ferrets. But few people know that he invented a lantern capable of giving a powerful beam from a single candle. His project of a bridge over the river Neva, for unclear reasons, decided not to finance, despite the fact that the 30-meter prototype passed the test. What about the project of a river ship that could move against the current 
without any engine. It didn't interest the elite of the time either, but few people know that Kulibin designed an elevator chair on which Catherine II descended to the throne room. After her death, the elevator was used for fun, and then it was dismantled and forgotten. So it is believed that the first elevator was invented in the United States to lift coal in mines. Here are a few more inventions that were rejected, which characteristically happened during the reign of the Romanov family. Andrei Natov and his unique machine tools. His main invention was the world's first lathe with a caliper and a set of interchangeable gears for changing gears. Alas, the machine and Natov himself were forgotten for many years. About what exactly machine tool invented Russian genius remembered only in the late 19th century accidentally found his drawings and descriptions in the state archive. Remote department Andrei Konstantinovich was engaged in compiling an encyclopedia, metalworking, and machine tool construction, which he called the theater, machinarium, or clear spectacle of machini. In it, he detailed 34 original lathes and lathe venturing machines. Natov completed this fundamental work not long before his death. Natov's son gave the manuscripts to the Chancellery of Catherine II. This invaluable work for many years dusted in the court library unclaimed. Shamshurenkov's self-running carriage, Leonti Shamshurenkov, a skillful mechanic from the people in 1751, made a state-ordered carriage that moved without any extraneous force. Shamshurenkov was rewarded with 50 rubles. At that time, it was 60 grams of gold. The further fate of the baby carriage is unknown to historians. 18 years later, in 1769, the Frenchman Nicolas Cugnot presented to the world a similar device. Atomonov's bicycle. In 1801, surf inventor Efim Atomonov at the Nizhny Tagel plant built the first two-wheeled all-metal pedal scooter, which would later be called a bicycle. In 1818, the patent for this invention was issued, as you have already guessed, not to Atomonov, but to German Baron Karl Dreis, electric streetcar, Pirotsky. In 1880, the residents of St. Petersburg were carried by an electric streetcar, which as an experiment was launched by the inventor Pirotsky. But the government was not interested in this experiment. As a result, a year later, the brothers von Simmons opened the first permanent electric streetcar line in Berlin. Kino Paratel Kimchenko. In 1893, in Odessa, on a large piece of white sheet, showed two of the world's first motion pictures, Kopimitatel and Board Rider. They were demonstrated with the help of a movie camera, which was designed by the mechanic inventor Kimchenko. In 1895, the patent for the invention of the movie camera was granted to Louis-Jean Lumiere, who together with his brother are considered to be the founders of cinematography. Why do you think Russia banned all developments? Write in the comments. Lady Jin's electric lamp. In 1872, Lady Jin patented the world's first incandescent electric light bulb. It used a carbon rod, which was placed in a vacuum bulb. The famous Edison only improved it, thus gaining worldwide fame. And this is despite the fact that Lady Gin was quite a famous inventor, forgotten inventions of Mendeleev. As it turned out, to break through the stubbornness of officials, it was not enough even a world name such as Mendeleev. Already in 1863, he proposed to deliver oil to the ports, not in barrels and the pipeline. The answer was silence. And only when a similar pipeline was built in Pennsylvania two years later did Russian officials realize that they had made a mistake in not listening to Mendeleev. It was only in 1877 that money was allocated for it. A similar story happened with Mendeleev's invention of pericolidine powder. Those who depended on financing were obsessed with foreign things and bought up foreign patents. Needless to say, the copyright for the invention was given to two Americans, Lieutenant Bernard and Captain Condors, who simply appropriated it for themselves. So during WWI, Russia had to buy this gunpowder in huge quantities from America. Does it seem to you too that this chain of alleged randomness is building up into a clear pattern? Let us recall at least the story of Kotelnikov's invention of the world's first satchel parachute. The novelty was recognized only in the USA. And only during World War I did the Tsarist government finally remember about it. Many Russian inventors were able to realize themselves only by immigrating to the United States, such as Zvarikin, the inventor of television, television broadcasting on the electronic principle and the basics of color television. 
the same fate was the realized inventor of the VCR. Of course, it happened because of the civil war and revolution in the country, but why were talented inventors not given funding for their inventions in the stable Soviet Union? We are talking about the inventions of Ivan Filimonenko, warm nuclear fusion, and magnetolet. Already in the 50s in our country, thanks to the developments of Filimonenko in one of the laboratories, appears hydrolysis power plant, capable of obtaining energy from a thermonuclear reactor operating at a temperature of 1150 degrees Celsius, which was considered impossible. The plant was fueled by heavy water, which includes deuterium. Filimonenko's reactor decomposed this water by electrolysis, producing oxygen and deuterium. It reacted chemically with a cathode, externally with palladium, from which the cathode was made. At the nuclear fusion level, the result was helium. And what is important is that the plant, as opposed to all modern reactors, was absolutely environmentally safe. There was no harmful radiation or waste, and it produced an incredible amount of energy in the form of steam under very high pressure. The plant was fully completed in 1957. In the 60s, Filimonenko's work was supported by Korchatov, Korolev, and Marshal Zhukov, but even they could not help even Filimonenko when he tried to register his installation as a technological invention. The refusal sounded more than absurd. Thermonuclear reactions cannot take place at such a low temperature, and this with a working and documented tested device. Meanwhile, the invention was being actively implemented but soon all documentation on the project was classified and then follows an incredible turn. In 1968, Filimonenko's department is liquidated and the investigator was forced to resign. The story did not end there. In 1989, 90s in the famous NPO Luch in Podolsk, Moscow region, were recreated three thermal emission units with a capacity of 12.5 kilowatts each. The space installation Tapas a light and powerful nuclear reactor for spacecraft with electric jet engines was also built. The first TAPAS flew into space in 1988 under the very collapse of the USSR and then, with the consent of Yeltsin, first sold to the US TAPAS and then were dismantled and sold very cheaply to pilot plants Filimonenko. The same fate befell the Magnetolet. Filimonenko designed a flying machine capable of levitating in the magnetic field of the planet its carrying capacity was up to five tons. In the press of those years, this invention was nicknamed the world's first flying saucer. Great Russian scientists made great inventions, a huge part of which was simply classified. But today it is time not only to remember their discoveries, but also perhaps to give them a second life. Why do some people leave a trace in history and others do not? Is someone more fortunate and someone less fortunate? Why were Russian inventors not funded and their brilliant inventions not perceived? Russians are very strong and intelligent. They have a backbone and their mentality is completely different from us Europeans and Americans. Don't underestimate the Russians. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe, you are waiting for a lot of documentaries about the truth of our world.